Nahum chapter 2 and chapter 3. And honestly, I've only preached out of this book a couple of times. I've read it a minimum of 28 times. I've only preached a couple of sermons out of it. <clears throat> this sermon that I'm, I'm not going to preach the sermon, I've got it for reference, but I'll, I'll not preach it, is a sermon that I preached here some six or seven years ago. I, I realize the majority of each one of you, by the time Thursday gets here, you will only remember about 5% of what was said from the pulpit. But as, as the author of the sermon, I remember most, if not all, and I keep all of them. And I love to reflect back and look and to, to see where we stand and, and, and was I hearing God correctly five years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years ago. And I looked at this sermon that I titled, The Fall of America. And by the way, if, if, if you, last week, if you, we had the early service and, and we didn't have the second service, and Michael uh, uh, gave us the, the, the message from Moses, and the week before that, he, he played a message of two or three years back that definitely fit for today. It's kind of a bittersweet, double-edged sword. It, it, it encourages and builds my faith to know that, yes, I did hear correctly, but it's bitter because it is correct. It, it, it reveals the time that we live in. And I'm, I'm going to try, I know normally I go to 15 after 12 and sometimes a little over 12.30. If you come to the early service, I preach an hour. I preach an hour at the early service. I have, so it's, it's always a longer sermon. And honestly, I, 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 could, I could stand up here and preach for two or three hours. I, it, 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 it wouldn't be a, a task at all. Because my heart is heavy. Uh, at the same time, I stay encouraged because... I, I I understand that the Lord, this all this didn't catch him off guard, and I chose this 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 particular passage because sometimes through our through our arrogance we believe just like Israel runs into the mistake of doing. Just because they're Israel or just because we're America, we have special privileges with God and we don't. We do not have any special privileges with God. And we can look in this passage in Nahum chapter 2. Nahum was a prophet that God brought now, a second prophet to the city of Nineveh. We all know the story of Jonah. Very few of us know the story of Nahum. Nahum comes in some 80 or 100 years later after revival had happened and, and people, uh, they, they, they prayed through, so to speak. God spared them. They never taught it to their kids. So they wind up going back into their idol worship and things of this nature and now they find themselves in a world of trouble. And Nahum is not only speaking what God has given him, but he's taking it also from a historical point as he could remember uh, the, the stories of when, 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 uh, um, when Israel, Jacob, and uh, they all came down to Egypt and they, they enjoyed the pleasures of Egypt. Uh, oh, Joseph, he took care of everything that they would have ever needed. And then he knows their history of what began to happen to them and they finally went into captivity. And he sees a resemblance of what was going on then and what was going on now at that point in time. And now he's expressing this judgment that's getting ready to come upon Nineveh. The time of prayer, the time of warnings are past. 
And I will, I will tell you this is my opinion, and when, I really, when it is my opinion, I will tell you that. My opinion, the warnings for America is over. There, there, there's no more warnings to be had. We've been warned, and we've been warned, and we've been warned, and we have continued down this, this path that we're on, and, and we can say, but what can we do? Listen, there was a lot that we could have been doing. But I'm not, it's not about that. In the book of Nahum, chapter 2, and before I go there, I just want to share a little bit of something that's going to be very disturbing. Now, I understand, most of you know that, that, that I have a, a, a knowledgeable understanding of how bills are made and, and how bills can die, how bills can... Uh, uh, can be changed and, and they're amended and they have several amendments, how they change through the course before they're ever passed if they are and then signed, uh, uh, passed in both houses and then signed by the executive branch and then they become law. 2019, there was a bill presented that passed the House. It wasn't given to the Senate and the reason because it wouldn't pass the Senate so they left it alone because if it had ever defeated, they would have had to started the whole process over. That's why they never sent it on to the Senate. They knew they couldn't pass it in the Senate, that they didn't have the votes. That, that, that bill was the Equality Act. If I'm not mistaken, that's probably House Bill number 5. And if you want to look it up, you can. And also, while you're there, just look up House Resolution Bill number 127. These are going to be very detrimental. Well, our president last week said he wants this Equality Act brought back this week. He wants it voted on in the House and then get it on over to the Senate where he's confident it will pass the Senate and he will then sign it into law. Sounds like a good thing by name, Equality Act, but it will be the demise, if not the destruction, of the America that we know. In this, there's a lot of, it deals with a lot of the LBGTQ and transgender community. And it, it'll, it'll predate and it'll go back and change some of our civil laws basically making this uh, uh, e illegal for a person that doesn't want to build or bake a, a, a wedding cake for a homosexual couple, it would basically uh, force them out of business. You know, I, I wasn't going to because it, it'll take me about three or four minutes, but I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to read you a little bit of synopsis of this bill, and the reason I'm doing this is because I feel like it's very, very important because I'm going to tell you this bill and what will come because of this bill will shut this church down. It'll shut it down, it'll lock the doors. I didn't say it'd shut churches down, but it will shut this church down if I have anything to do with it. And, I, and I'll just go ahead and tell you, I am not going to back up on anything that I believe that the Word of God stands for. I am not against a homosexual person. I'm not against a transgender. I'm not against anyone. But I stand for what is truth, and I'm not going to stand here at the pulpit and compromise my faith just because a government says that I must. We'll, we'll lock the doors before we'll do it. In this, and this is a little bit of synopsis of the bill in 2019, but, but as far as I know, it hasn't changed at this point. Supporters of the Equality Act claim it will increase equality in America, but it will actually harm one of the most fundamental rights that we share, religious freedom. It purports to ban discrimination, but it actually bans disagreement. If passed, the law will damage not only the priceless American achievement of religious freedom for all, but, it, but also its indispensable pluralism, limited government, and unity. 
introduced in Congress earlier this year, and it's talking about 19. And it's scheduled for a vote on the House floor Friday would add sexual orientation, gender identity to classes protected under the Civil Rights Act such as our race and sex. Proponents assert a faulty analogy between the SOGI, which is sexual orientation, gender, identity, and race. Race is an immutable characteristic unconnected to distinctive behavior or expressions. By contrast, behaviors and expressions are part of the SOGI identities. Can the rejection of SOGI behaviors and expressions be tolerated in America? In its decisions legalizing same-sex marriage, the Supreme Court says many who deem same-sex marriage to be wrong reach that conclusion on dissent and honorable religious and philosophical principles. And that comes from Justice Anthony, Anthony Kennedy. The Equality Act assumes that those who have reached that conclusion are indecent and dishonorable. It's talking about you and I. While the Civil Act was necessary to overcome institutionalized racism, the Equality Act would suppress particular beliefs on sexual expression and behavior, especially religious convictions on sexuality, marriage, human nature, and human dignity. The law would devastate institu institutions built on those convictions, such as schools, charities, small businesses, hospitals, and houses of worship. The act will expose person or groups holding these beliefs to lawsuits and financial ruin. The law will mark them, like racists, as hateful and bigoted. The largest financial backer of these laws, Tim Gill, has labeled opponents as wicked people who must be punished. A sampling of likely harms foreshadows in America increasing government coercion, some of which is already happening in schools with traditional policies on sex and marriage, will lose their tax exempt and be forced to change or close. Adoption agencies seeking to place children with married and mothers and fathers will be forced to shut down. And, share, and, and females will have to compete in sports and share locker rooms and dorms with biological males. Small businesses that cannot in good conscience participate in same-sex wedding will be driven out of business. The act recognizes no protection. It eliminates any right of discerners to challenge a lawsuit based on the free exercise protection of the First Amendment as reaffirmed in 1993, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Gay, lesbian, and transgender people have suffered grievous discrimination in the past. Today, however, most religiously conservative Americans have adopted a live and let live attitude, drawing on the same understanding of the human person that undergirds their views of sexuality, marriage, human nature. They believe that the abuse of the LGBTQ persons is deeply sinful. American politics is based on the revolutionary principle that representative democracy is the best system, but that even democratic governments controlled by humans who are by their nature beguiled by power pose a danger to freedom and equality. Given our modern tendency toward fierce disagreements over the right and the good, our system of checks and balances serves us well especially the First Amendment freedoms of speech, assembly, and religion. James Madison suggested religious freedom was America's first freedom, not because religious people are superior to others, but because the right to free exercise of religion is necessary for human and political flourishing. None of us can truly be free without the right to seek religious truth and to order our lives and to, or, and to order our lives accordingly. Our founders understood that religious communities contributed mildly to the common good and limited the power of government by positioning an authority greater than government, which is God. There was a little bit more to that. But I'm telling you, Unless God stops it, and I don't see it happening, this bill will be passed very soon. And at some point in time, 
they're going to take care of the ones of us who call ourselves Christians. A true Christian. And this Word of God, as we understand it, will have to be will have to be deemed illegal because of what it stands for. These things are not coming. I've been preaching for years. These things are coming. They're no longer coming. They are here. Matt Staver, when you get people like Matt Staver from Liberty Council that now is warning you that, that we've got to do something, he's going to be with BCY America tomorrow. I don't know what time doesn't matter. It'll be taped. All you have to do is look it up. You, you can listen to it sometime tomorrow evening. But I'm sure he's going to give you numbers for you to call your representatives. Well, this I know about bills. And if, and if, and if I was told correctly, I should have looked it up. This Equality Act. Because what happens is you'll have a bill and whoever designs or writes this bill, you'll have a, a representative uh, on, on each house either the House or the Senate, that will attach their name to that bill. And you can see the strength of a bill by the person's name or by the co-sponsors. This bill, I was told, has 200 and something co-sponsors, which is enough to go ahead and pass the House. So, why call? I call. I'm sure there's not going to be a reason unless they can bargain for something that's worse. See, it's not a matter of is, is this going to pass. In my opinion, it's already passed. And if, if it doesn't, then it's just not in God's timing at this point. But these, this bill at some point or something like it, is going to happen. And we ask the question, why? Go to Nahum chapter 2. I'm going to read chapter 2, and by the time I get to chapter 3, I'm going to explain to you why. Nahum chapter 2. We begin at verse number 1. He who scatters has come before your face. Man the fort. Watch the road. Strengthen your flanks. Fortify your mighty. This is in the city of Nineveh. For the Lord will restore the excellence of Jacob like the ex excellence of Israel. For he empty, for the emptiers have emptied them out and the ruined their vines and branches. The shields of His mighty men are made red. The valiant men are in scarlet. The chariots come with flaming torches in the day of His preparation. And the spears are banished. The chariots rage in the streets. They jostle one another in brood roads. Listen, let me tell you what that means in today's term. The chariots rage in the streets. In other words, it would be like us sitting here today and all of a sudden we hear the, 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 the tracks of our military tanks going up and down the road. This is what Nahum is prophesying that's getting ready to happen in the city of Nineveh. The chariots rage in the street. They jostle one another in the brood roads. They seem like torches. They run like lightning. He remembers his nobles. They stumble in their walk. They make haste to their walls and the defense is prepared. The gates of the river are open and the palace is dissolved. It is decreed. She shall be led away captive. She shall be brought up and her maid servants shall be led as with the voice of doves beating their breast. Though Nineveh of old was like a pool of water, now they flee away. Halt, halt, they cry, but no one turns back. Take spoil of silver, take their gold. There is no need, there is no end of treasure or wealth of every desirable price. She is empty, she is desolate, and she is waste. 
The heart melts, the knees shake, much pain is in every side, and all their faces are drained from color. Where is the dwelling of the lions and the feeding place of the young lions, where the lions walked and the lioness and the lions club? And no one made them afraid. The lion tore in pieces enough for his cubs, killed for his loneliness, lionesses, filled his caves with prey and his dens with flesh. Behold, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts. I will burn your chariots in smoke and the sword shall devour your young lions. I will cut off your prey from the earth, and the voice of your messenger shall be heard no more. I'm going to tell you something. Before I go to chapter 3, and I'm uh, to show you what was going on that would cause God to move. And you better get in your spirit. This is God's judgment upon these people. This is not something that the devil is orchestrating. I'm telling you, God is judging this nation because of what they were doing and what they had done. And we must ask the question, could we be doing the same thing? And and I'm not going to go through the list, so I'll just go ahead and tell you, absolutely we're doing it if we're not doing worse. But yet we're looking for God to do something to get us out of this mess. Send us Donald Trump back. Well, I just listened to Donald Trump speak on Newsmax TV yesterday, and he said, I might come back in 2024. I don't know. Maybe 2022. I don't know what's going on. But Donald Trump is not coming back. We have the administration that we're going to have. And we don't need Donald Trump to come back. Donald Trump done a good job, but... Well, I'll not go there. We've done these things. And we're asking God and, 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 and we're trying to live life like we've been living it for years. And I'm telling you, just like Jeremiah, the, the warnings have ended. It's no longer... Will, will, will God pull America out of this? No, we are under the judgment of God. Let, let me tell you where this Equality Act will lead. I mean, because they're not done. Well, first of all, let, let's back up and even get away from the Equality Act. I, I, I listened to an interview with Bill Gates the other day. And, and let me tell you something. A lot of times what Bill Gates wants, he'll put enough money behind it till he gets it. And he owns more farmland than any other person in America. And right now, he's saying cattle must go. we got to get rid of the cattle. He said we got to change everything. The way we do everything, every, because of this climate deal, we've got to change everything. He said it's going to hurt, it's going to be expensive, but we can do it, but we must do it. And then I started listening to some, some people that, that are on, on this racism because everything is racist. And now they say that we've got to change everything that we do. I'm going to tell you something. Don't tell me that we ain't under the judgment of God when we, we have gotten so stupid it ain't even funny. I mean, when God says we'll start calling those things holy, unholy, and right and wrong, all of this we'll call things that are right, wrong, and wrong, right. We are absolutely doing it. Those people said we even got to change math because math is racist. I don't know how math is racist. I still never made that connection. But I, they did explain to me the, how the other racist was. Like, for example, when I was growing up, If you was afraid to do something, we called you a chicken. Well, no, no, no. Now it's a coward because you're being racist toward the chicken. See how foolish this is. These are people that are going to be writing laws. And for the people that says, you know what, Pastor, we shouldn't bring politics into the pulpit. The only thing I can say, you better bring some politics in the pulpit because somebody better start announcing what's happening so we can at least figure out what, we, what, we, what we've got to do. 
Now, I'm going to tell you, more than likely come March, we're going to start, anybody that's interested, we're going to start some of our refresher stuff, and we're going to get back in place our, our, how we had uh, 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 coordinators in different parts of the county because I can foresee our church shutting its doors in the very near future. And we need to have a plan because this is not catching God off guard. And He still, in His Word, said we have to have a five-fold ministry. He said in His Word, we still have to have the gospel must go forward. So He still said that forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner some are in these last days. I know COVID hit and people quit coming to church. I'm telling you, we have to have a plan. We must have put it forth today because we must be prepared and ready. If we wait till it gets here, we will not be ready. We're going to be ready. I'm going to be ready. And anybody that wants to be part of it can be part of it. If you want to continue traveling the road you travel... You just go right ahead. If you want to believe that you're going to, you're going to walk through this by yourself, you go ahead and believe that, and I will guarantee you failure. I don't want to be hateful and mean, but I'm telling you, God has bubbled this in me, and I'm going to tell you, I just have to say what I have to say. I don't want it to sound mean. I don't want it to be hurtful. I don't want you to be scared. I don't want you to be in these things. I want you to be prepared for whatever's coming. And then when it comes here, we will be able to keep doing what we need to do. Yeah, it may bring some disruptions, but the disruptions will just be a disruption, but it will not stop what God has planned for us. But for those who say this will never happen, we're too civilized. America's always pulled through. We've always had the right answers. We've always been able to do this or do that. Well, let me tell you something. We've always pulled through because of the mercy of God, but I'm telling you, that is stopping today. God is, is bringing, He's already bringing judgment. But we look at Nineveh. We have to look at Nineveh. It's, it's a very important piece of the puzzle for me and helping me to understand. In, in, in chapter 3 it says, Woe to the bloody city! It's all full of lies and robbery. Its victims never departs. The noise of a whip, the noise of rattling wheels, galloping horses, clattering chariots. Horsemen charge with bright sword and glittering spear. There's a multitude of slain, a great number of bodies, countless corpses. They stumble over the corpse because the multitude of harlotries of the seductive harlot, the mistress of the sorceries, who sells nations through her harlotries and families through her sorceries. Verse number 5, Behold, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts. I will lift your skirts over your face. I will show the nation your nakedness and the kingdoms your shame. I will cast abominable filth upon you and make you vile and make you a spectacle. And it shall come to pass that all who look upon you will flee from you and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will bemoan her? Where shall I seek comforters? For you. We see what happened to Nineveh. And let me tell you something. You think America was wealthy and powerful. Let me tell you, Nineveh was just as wealthy and just as powerful. You need to do a little bit of research and you'll see how powerful and how wealthy, but you'll also see at this point in time how corrupt that they had become. And folks, I'm telling you, we must understand that God is not a respecter of persons, and it's not my opinion on whether or not God will do this. History records how He done it before and how He will do it again. So we see in this, what was it that caused God to react against Nineveh? Well, verse 1 and 2 tells us, Nineveh fell because of bloodshed, lies, and robbery. Boy, you know when I wrote this sermon in 2015, 
my robbery looked a whole lot different then than it does today. Because now when I think of robbery, I think of the election. They didn't even hide it. Now they may have hid November 3rd election, but that runoff election in Sanders race in Atlanta, we knew what they were going to do, and we still couldn't stop them from doing it. Just robbery. Forget about that, how the government has robbed the people just in and of itself. And, oh my goodness, lies. The lies that are being told. I'm going to tell you something, and Steve, Steve mentioned it also in Sunday school. If Donald Trump didn't do anything, he exposed the corruptness of a nation. We see the lies and the hypocrisy just that, they, that, just that they directed toward that man, let alone to an entire nation. There was bloodshed. The sin of bloodshed and murder. Today, all I have to do is say one word, and that meets that requirement, that's abortion. 60 million plus. Lies and deception. Oh, on this one, you know what I wrote? Clinton and Benghazi. Oh my goodness, that, that, they don't even touch the stuff now that's going on. The spirit of deceitfulness swept through the, the Assyrian society. Husbands was lying to wives, and wives was lying to husbands. Parents lying to their kids. Neighbor lying to neighbor, friend to friend. Businesses were lying to each other. Employers were lying to their employees. Full of lies and deceit. The entire, the entire city was condemned because it was full of lies, robbery. Let, let, me, let me tell you something. You may like those stimulus checks that, 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 that we get, that's a form of robbery. Now, I know you don't have a choice whether you can take it or leave it, but that's a form of robbery. We are robbing our generations to come of their livelihood. Why did God pass judgment upon Nineveh? Not only that, but because of their lust, their, their idolatry, their sorcery, and their witchcraft. Do you know the Greek words you can find in sorcery and, rich, uh, and, 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 and witchcraft? The Greek word they use there a lot of times is pharmakia. That's where we get our word pharmacy from. Legal and illegal drugs are destroying a nation. I was told the other day people moving in to Fentress County, they were having second thoughts about coming into Fentress County because they heard Jamestown was a dangerous place to live. And the only thing I can figure out, they have to be thinking about the drugs that's in Fentress County. See, we don't think about it being a dangerous place to live. When I go to, whenever I went to Tijuana, or, or, yeah, Tijuana Mexico, or Haiti, I went to out of, outside of Port au Prince, or when I went to uh, uh, Narsapur, India. And these places, Dorothy was always concerned about my safety because she would read, this is, these are very dangerous places. And then I met a missionary in Haiti that was going to the States to be a missionary in the, city, in, in, the, in the state of Michigan, in the city of Detroit, telling me that he's not even allowed to go down some of the streets in Detroit. We want to talk about wickedness... The, it's here in America. We don't need to go to another country and find it. Sorcery, witchcraft, I, lust. I, I, I don't even have to... Oh my. Nineveh had these temple prostitutes. Committing this abominable acts in the temple. Pretty bad, isn't it? 
But when statistics tell me that 85% of the men are viewing porn every week out and it's sitting in our churches. And now you want to say, God bless America? Really? Now you're not going to find any, more, any, any person that's more of a patriot than I am. Oh my goodness, I'm, 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 I'm watching, I'm, I'm reading it, and my heart breaks. I, I, I so want to live during the revolutionary, the revolutionary era of time. As rough as it would have been. But the, the love for country I probably shouldn't say this on film. I, I, I take longer in the early service because I'm not being taped. Maybe because... But, but I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. If you're not willing to stand and even die for this nation, don't even think you'll stand against the Antichrist. You will fold. When I tell you I lock these doors, I lock the doors. If, if that means that they say, Pastor, I, well, if you go out anywhere and preach this, you'll go to jail, then I'll just have to go to jail. And I'm not standing here making that assumption without thinking through what that means. I am telling you, we are mandated by a holy God what we must do. We cannot cower back. And if we look at our revolutionary founding fathers, they would tell you that even the tree of liberty, at times, there must be blood has to be shed from the patriots. Are you saying that, that we're going to have to go to war? I'm telling you, better go to war. I may not be talking, you may not have to pick up a weapon, but I'm here to tell you, you better start standing up for your God-given rights. I'm not talking about your American rights anymore. I am talking about the rights that you have given from the Word of God. We cannot allow them to silence us. We can't do it. We must preach. We must stand. No matter what or who comes against us, we, we cannot worry about getting our feelings hurt and we can't worry about if someone's going to be scared. We are in a war, guys. We better understand that we are soldiers in the army of God. And God will walk through with us even if it's unto death. You may sound, this sounds fictional in the United States of America. I'm telling you, it's happening in other places. You're talking about lust. How many people would even think, and, and, and the sex trafficking, how many people would even think, surely our leaders are not involved in human worship or human sacrifice? Yes, they are. Just do a little bit of research. Or sex driving, taking these young girls and, 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 and what they birth out of an innocent girl is someone like Molly Cyrus. It's because of what they've done to that girl. Our leaders. And we want to say, God bless America. Well, I'm not talking about that, Pastor. Well, what are you talking about when you say, God bless America? We're asking God to bless something that is in direct opposition against Him. And we must make a stand. And if that means that we have to call out some of these things, because I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of religious folks that are all about this Equality Act. I'm telling you, we are getting ready to see the true body of Christ have to stand against the rest of Christianity, so-called. You're going to have to decide which side of the, the which side of the aisle are you on, and it's not Republican, it's not Democrat, it's not conservative, it's political. But are you on the side that Christ and His Word will stand with, or are you going to go over here and side with what's politically correct that's in direct opposition of what God has to say? Lust, adultery, sorcery, witchcraft. Illicit sex, in prostitution, holotry, adultery in the Bible refers to acts of illicit sex and spiritual adultery. 
Let me tell you where the spiritual adultery is coming in. You've seen the wealth uh, and the power of Nineveh, a great city. They were using that, that wealth and that power to influence other nations. Do you see this happening in America? Who do you think, until Donald Trump, and, and, and Biden's already reversing a lot of that, until Donald Trump came, what nation did you see that was giving money to other nations to help abort these babies? The United States of America. And the Lord says, no. Enough. During the days that came after Jonah, the people began to turn away from the Lord, give their self to false gods. Their worship, their devotion were focused more upon so-called gods of this world and idols created in people's imaginations. The Syrians were guilty of worshiping power and wealth. It sounds so familiar. Politically, they used their power and their wealth to seduce other nations into unholy relationships or treaties with them. And the Lord says, I'm going to raise your skirt and I'm going to show your nakedness to the world. And He did this. Federal government uses power and wealth to seduce states. States! We don't have to worry about foreign countries. Tennessee does some things today, not because Tennessee wants them, because the federal government says, if you don't, we'll shut your money off. You will teach Common Core or we will shut your money down. I'm, I'm spending a lot of time to show you that we have met all of these qualifications that we should expect God to do this. And if we're not careful, we'll be just like Nineveh. They, they, were, so, they, they were so engrossed and so uh, de 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 deceived. Like I believe we are today. They began to give credit to God for their power and their wealth. And the Lord said, I don't want that credit. I'm not doing that. In their minds, it was their God who was blessing them with the victory and their wealth. And we do that in America. God is blessing us. Look at our wealth. Look at the victory. The question is, who is the gods of America? Let me tell you who, we, who it is. In India, I, I mentioned they've got 330 million gods. And we match it. Maybe exceed it. Probably about 330 plus million. Because you know who the gods are in America? We are. Mm. We are. Amen. Whether you want to, we are the gods. We do what we want. I'm going to tell you after 9 11, what did we hear? We will rebuild, we will be stronger. Who said this? Our leaders. Who cheered them on? We did. We are becoming self-sufficient. We don't need God any longer. And I will tell you, the God that was mostly worshipped today in, in, in this time of Nineveh was the, 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 the goddess of Assyria, Ishtar. It was a goddess of sex and war. A goddess worshipped by most of the people. I'm telling you, there's a billion dollar industry in America called pornography. You can say what you ever, whatever you want to, but it's become something that we are worshipping in this nation. 
sex, and it doesn't matter if we're talking about sex with the woman, a man and a woman, or sex with a man and say, or a man with a man, or a woman and a woman, and you mark it down because we have become so corrupt. The next thing is sex with an animal, bestiality. And God laid out four Pacific Judge punishments, and I'm going to read these, and I'm going to have to quit. He declared that he stood against the Assyrians and everything that they represented. Twice he said, I am against you. Can you imagine that God would be sitting in heaven saying, America, I am against you. If if, if that doesn't bother you, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure he is. He said that He would expose a serious naked and shamefulness behavior to the world. He has done that to us. He declared that He would cover a serious country, the nation, the empire with filth and contempt. Is that not where we're at? Making them a spectacle for the whole world to see. God declared that He would destroy Nineveh, the Assyrian Empire. And here's what was so sad. Read it in verse 7. No one would mourn for her or to seek comfort for her. Christy, come on up because I I know I, I can't continue. I've got to go. Listen, guys. You, 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 and there, there, there's more to this, but I've got to quit. You say, but pastor, that was Nineveh. This is America. Well, do you know God has not aged one moment from Nineveh to America? His thoughts during Nineveh is His same thoughts today. You, 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 you can either... Pray and hope that it's not going to happen, or or you can get yourself spiritually, physically, emotionally, every aspect of our being ready to carry forth with the message in the hardest of conditions. But I want to leave you with some encouragement. See, for years, I've been a watchman on the wall. Heralding the warnings. There are no more warnings. So today, I want to be a watchman on the wall. Unfortunately, I have to spend time to prove to you that we are where we are. But more importantly, I want to be a watchman on the wall to herald to you that God will never leave you nor forsake you. That no matter what happens, He's right there to walk with us. See, when we talk about the grace of God, we, we, we think about it that we, we can sin and get by with it and grace covers it. I'm, I'm referring to the grace of God that what, wherever He plants us, He'll grant us grace to carry us through and to help us to carry through with the plan and the mandate that He has for our life. And we will be victorious. We will be more in conquerors even though our nation's falling apart. We will be a a, a, a nation or a people that God will protect even though our nation has dissolved all around us. And through all the hardships, We can have joy that's unspeakable and full of glory.